Uh, yeah, it's a very important mission uh, for lunar science, but also obviously for China. It's their first attempt to bring back any um, material from the surface of the moon. Uh, the last time this was done was in August of 1976. It was a Soviet Union Luna 24 spacecraft. Um, and then before that, um, I get, you know, the Apollo missions from the U.S. brought back around um, almost between 350 kilograms of rock and soil from the moon. And uh, this mission hopes to bring back, I, I've seen it reports between two and four kilograms. So uh, it'll be a pretty hefty sample return mission. And, um, you know, we hope to get it, it's going to get started here in about an hour and a half. Well, what, uh, James, if you don't mind my asking, what do we hope to learn from these samples that we bring back from the moon? Well, this landing site that was chosen is an area around 43 degrees north latitude on the moon in the ocean of storms, Oceanus Procolarum. Uh, no spacecraft have ever landed in this particular region of uh, the ocean of storms. The Apollo 12 mission or mission um, with the Apollo 12 astronauts landed in uh, uh, November of 1969, but it was way south of there. This area is called Mons Rumker. It's a, uh, um, a topographically high area. It had, the most important thing about this is um, these appear to be some very young volcanic deposits up here on the moon. That, that, um, all the Apollo and Luna samples that we have thus far from the moon are between three and four billion years old. This landing site, um, we think, is only going to have lavas about a billion years old. That's, that's very young geologically for the moon. So um, it's going to be new samples. Uh, we'll find out if our um, hypothesis is correct, if these are indeed that young once we get the samples back. But um, it's basically the youngest, some, some of the youngest volcanism on the moon that uh, is hoped to be sampled from this mission. Right. I want to get a little bit into the technology because Chang'e uh, 5 involves innovations not seen before, including um, a, a four-component model that's completely automated. Uh, talk to us about what China's trying to accomplish here. Uh, this mission, obviously, for bringing samples back, is something that China's never done because it's their first attempt to land on the surface and return samples. Now, China has landed two previous spacecraft on the moon. One of them is still functioning on the lunar far side. It's almost two years ago that it landed in January. But, but um, to land and then to take off is brand new and to return to Earth and bring the samples back. So this, these are new aspects of the project. And um, personally for me, I, I think this technology and is going to, it's a proving ground for China's hopes to send astronauts to the moon and back, because obviously you have to land on the moon, then you have to lift off from the moon, and ride and dock with spacecraft in lunar orbit, and then come home to Earth. So I, I think some of the technology um, is going to feed forward into that project. Um, I know that China has not put a time exactly when they plan to land their uh, astronauts on the moon. The numbers I keep hearing around 2030, but I think it's possibly to be earlier than that. This mission is important also for the engineering aspects of it. Um, just to prove that you can land, take off, rendezvous and dock in lunar orbit, then come home. Um, th those are important steps for uh, not only sample return, but for future missions, sending astronauts there. Right. And could this um, automated model also form a blueprint for a Mars sample return? Uh, in some ways, because for, for a Mars sample return, you're right. You have to do some of the similar techniques. Now, landing on the moon is a lot easier than landing on Mars. Um, we're going to find out in February, um, you know, how, how, how the, uh, the Chinese and American spacecraft do um, planning to land on Mars. The U.S. Um, is landing Perseverance rover on February 18, 2021. And China has a mission en route to land on the surface of Mars. Uh, the number, I keep hearing around April or May 2021. Um, so... Yes, it'd be some of the technology obviously could feed forward for a Mars sample return, um, but you're going to—it's a little more difficult because Mars has a higher gravitational attraction, therefore a higher energy field you got to get out of. You have to have a more energetic rocket to take off from the surface to rendezvous and dock, and then come bring the samples from Mars back to Earth. But yes, some of the uh, technology can be, um, you know, uh, I guess spruced up, so to speak, to get ready for Mars. Um, there, there are different, different things about Mars and the moon that challenges, but uh, some of the basic uh, engineering 
Um, mechanics to do this or, or apply for the moon and Mars, though.